Wang guan, wang guan people them. Welcome to my channel and welcome to room 2703 Reacts. Um, so I'm gonna get this really short and sweet because I have been dying to get into these last two episodes of Bridging the Rift since the last episode. For everyone that's watching this along with me, like, well, who's already watched it even, like it's just such an eye-opening take on what is already such an iconic show and it's really interesting that one of the subscribers that that subscribed to my channel, shout out to Leon, was saying how this has become like his favourite show. It used to be Avatar, just like me. Like, I, I mean, I still love Avatar to this day, actually. I only watched it again just the other day, and Korra. I like them both. This one, it's just, it's got so many layers. And thanks to amazing people who watch this and conversations that happened as well, I'm learning so much more about it as well. So this is fantastic and I'm really, really enjoying it. So. We're going to watch episode four and episode five, a bit of a double whammy, and I can't wait. So I'm going to start talking. Let's get straight into it. This is episode four, Bridging the Rift, or part four even, uh, Musical Misfits. Ah! I do this every, every week, every week, not like I've been doing this the last five months. Turn on your stuff before you start. Okay. This is Jim. <laughs> All wrong once again. Ooh. Hear the proving wrong. This looks sick already. What is going on here? <sighs> it just takes you straight back, doesn't it? At Riot, we've always loved music. In fact, in certain countries, people don't call us a game company. They call us a music company, and they say we're making games to do marketing for our music. I can believe that. And so obviously, when we dived into a TV show, we knew music was going to be a big part of it. I love that. I love that they knew that from there. Music is obviously personal to Christian. It's personal to a lot of folks on that team. You go write the script and I think it's the same thing with music you know when you go write a song and you sit down to do it and someone asks you oh are you, are you gonna write a great song today it's kind of like it's kind of like going you know maybe you know it's, it's kind of like going fishing he said good analogy so. Welcome to the who was that singing that I'm actually gonna catch one A good analogy that is. We worked on all kinds of arcane, came about. We said, hey, we're going to craft a full album of all these different songs, of all these different genres. It really was the culmination of all the different skill sets that we've developed over many years. I think it's time to say goodbye. Oh. Oh. How sick would it have been to work? at this company man, like what more do you need? It's got everything. It's got everything. Musical misfits. Mm. Welcome to my studio in LA. Hollywood. Uh, this is where we make some of the music for Arcane. Follow me. Happy to. <laughs> for an incredibly messy aesthetic of gear everywhere. We don't invite people over. You're the first human beings I've seen or invited here in years. <laughs> we prefer dark, no windows. <laughs> where some of the best work gets done. At the most important instrument of them all, obviously, the French horn here. Oh, wow. Everything I do is just French horn, and then I'll just auto-tune it to sound like other instruments. It's a cool trick that I learned in school. Just kidding, I'm way in debt for my college loans. It's a sad story. <laughs> he seems cool. I like him. What's really, really special is that he's not only extremely talented at writing melodies you know for pop vocals but also he's a classically trained musician he went to juilliard as a french horn player oh wow <laughs> failed i've been working with riot since about 2016. each year for their world's event the biggest esports tournament probably ever we write an anthem for them so like a big pop song legends never die was the first like world's anthem that i wrote and about two and a half years ago, Christian 
re reached out and he's like, what do you think about Arkane? Do you want to get involved? And I was just like, oh. Of yes. course, yes. <laughs> like, <the> sickest. <laughs> I love him. See, but I'm going to Google him after. We always wanted to make music part of the development from the very beginning instead of just this post-production phase, you know, that it often is in film and television. That more organic, it's part of it from the get-go. Arcane was pretty much a series of index cards stuck to the acoustic treatment in Christian's composing room. Technically, he was still a composer then, but he had the story that he wanted to tell, and he had ideas for who he wanted to help him tell it. Alex Temple. Is Great name. An incredible composer. I'd done shorter form narrative, whether it's like a three to five minute trailer or things like that, but nothing approaching the scope of Arcane. I love the fact that it's quite challenging for everybody, like taking them out of their comfort zones and pushing their skill set. It's played, it has a pentatonic scale, um, and you can affect the pitch by, you know, bending. Oh. Here. Oh. Um, I've been using it completely incorrectly, you know, playing the back side of the instrument. For the first few months, at least, we actually stayed away from any, like, picture material so cool. from the show. And we just explored themes and isolation for a character, every character. You want something that clearly makes a statement about who this character is, but you also want something that's adaptable. The beginning of episode three, we have this... So for example, we have this character, Silco. You know, he's kind of one of the villains of the show. He's a complex character. He has good reasons for some of his motives, but he's, you know, he's sort of a villain. I end up writing for him. It's not sort of villainous at all. It's, it's very sort of welcoming and, and kind of seductive in a way. <sighs> a very confused, distorted version of that uh, melody we heard performed so beautifully by the soprano in the other cue. I love that. I love that. You, you should feel like you remember this character in this moment when you hear this melody. They're always there, but sometimes they're darker, sometimes they're brighter, sometimes they're faster. Mm. They're always there. Alex Temple, the lead composer. That's so clever. He's just such a god tier orchestra composer, like to a level I can't get to. Bar 13 can, can play that out a little more. Okay. Thanks. Uh, one, one more for luck, and then we'll move on. It's such a huge production. So I listened to just all this Mahler and like Bruckner and all these people and so I thought I was obsessed with it and then I'd talk Mahler with him and he's just like, oh the specific recording of George Schulte from 1975, I prefer the third movement versus the Bernstein recording. And you're like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right, you win the nerd contest. <laughs> <laughs> I see your nerd, I raise you. <laughs> That's amazing. This is just... So Ray Chen is a, a phenomenal violinist. Yeah. Ray plays mm. as a soloist with the Los Angeles Philharmonic, the big orchestras in Europe, you know, London. He's probably the first classical violinist who plays on like a 20s, whatever million dollar Stradivarius to an animated series. It's written because we know he can play it. So it's him playing this. <laughs> it's like his fingers are on fire. Oh, about that. <laughs> that, that, that was horrible, my god. He actually broke the string. <laughs> this is a cue that's based on the theme of the character Victor. This is around the time when, when he pushes his you know body and the transformation further and further and gets seduced in a way by this hex core and uh, starts to kind of lose parts of his humanity like 
like a terrible beauty, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's like a melancholic beauty. Tragic ascendancy because it's like, it's not a good thing that's happening. But at the same time, this is kind of like a, a leveling up of the character. This yeah. is an important stage of his development. Exactly that. Great way to describe it. That's such a terrible I've cost as well. Orchestra stuff with Alex Temple for about two and a half years. And it was only about a year ago that we were like, let's do a, you know, 11, 12 song pop soundtrack to go with the show. This is my cheer. We knew that we also wanted to create these special moments in every episode with music. So with the editors and the directors of our team, we tried to find a moment where the music can actually take over and be in the spotlight. I remember this as well. Working, working, the pressure is pretty high. This is so sick. And the story is amazing, and the animation is amazing, the score is amazing, the, the sound is great, the music has to be good too. The 100%. Be good. 100%. They can't slack on this. Sebastian is this interesting character. I remember in his interview, we always asked him, like, what kind of song would you make for this character for, for that moment? And he would always just go, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> just start hearing the songs, and all of a sudden, you're just blown away. He's, he's the kind of person that just does, but doesn't talk about it. I love that. Loud the flapping. They was get in there and start doing. But Arcane, the extra difficulty was that, you know, the, the purpose of the song is for a scene, is for the story. This is such cheer. Unlike other movies and shows that might have just like a standalone incidental soundtrack of pop artists, we actually wrote these to picture the way that you would score something. I've seen your face around here. Come along, tell me under the table. What do you see? I know for Sebastian and myself, it was. I love this. Them to dodge between dialogue or like hit peak moments to picture, which might not be happening at a set tempo. Zon, this underground world where a lot of things kind of get repurposed, reused, mangled, distorted. Uh, that's what the drums kind of also tell me. When we worked with B. Miller, she had recorded some really amazing improvisations. Like this, this for example, is... I love that song when I first heard it. So what we did instead is to actually write the songs ourselves and then bring on the artist to kind of like, you know, either just sing it or find their version of it. Wherever you are. Funny enough, we didn't even initially think about Wood Kid for this song. We had him for a different one, and he happened to hear this demo and went, Oh, let me do that one instead. <laughs> and it was the greatest thing that could have ever happened. And then he turned it into the most chill inducing string thing I've ever heard. Yeah, this so is so it sick. It starts here, and then you never quite know what it's going to end up being. Uh, the other big one was the uh, Jinx Echo fight <laughs> in episode 7. I remember this. Got that vibe figured out, and then for the vocalist, the rapper, they were like, okay, we have some ideas of who could be super cool. We're like, okay, let, let's, let's see what, what can, you know, let's send the track to them and see if they want to do it, and also you know, are they going to do something that, that fits? Jizzle was another one. Just might kick your butt, go run them up, then paint my nails. Never learn to raise my hand, was too busy raising hell. And Brent Joy, he sent us a demo that was kind of, sounded like a female vocal. I was like, oh, that's a really cool, catchy kind of chorus uh, part. Turns out it was him just pitched up. All three sent us really awesome stuff. 
but like, what can we do? A little bit of a challenge just from having so much good material. How do we, uh, how do we make it in, how do we make three songs into one song? Let's try to use all three. <laughs> In this gothic underground city, we all sin. If I bring a couple rounds with me, then we all win. I came back and brought the crown. These guys are actually geniuses. So. Well, oh guys, this is amazing. Everything we did for music was kind of happening then, like after the, the cut, the episodes were already done, and so now. This one of my favorite ones so far already. Yeah. <laughs> Working with Christian is pretty special because he's a musician. That's also another great thing about him is that he's not gonna waste time. If it's not great, he'll tell you. He'll tell you right away, yeah, it's not working. Started his career at Riot in an entry level position, answering tickets when players have a problem, whether it's a technical problem or billing problems. Then only a couple years later, he started to write some music and, and only then we realized, oh my God, <laughs> this guy is, an amazing talent. You know, the first time I met him, he came wow. on campus, very quiet, very unassuming, other than, of course, the neck tattoo. And, and you know, I'm like, hmm. so, you know, tell me what jobs have you worked? What have you done prior to coming here? And he's like, oh, well, you know, uh, I did, um, I did some music. You know, I was in a band. I traveled around Europe doing some tour kind of stuff. It took me a little while to realize wow. that it was, in fact, a big deal. But I believe he told me the biggest audience he played in front of was like 100,000 people. He gives us feedback like, no, the cello needs to be an octave lower and it needs to be this dynamic. Like he just knows how to speak music. <laughs> when I released my album, I had one song that I was like super into and I'm still really happy with it, but I just remember Christian was like, and Christian liked it when I was working on it. And then he heard the final, he's like, hmm, it sounds unfinished. <laughs> <laughs> It's really what you want to hear. <laughs> they seem like a really good bunch of people as well. Like good vibes, man. We had to come up with, and this one was the hardest one. Yeah. The concept was uh, ambitious, was ambitious, and hard to execute. <laughs> By the way, this is a big champion moment for Vi and for Jace, and this needs to be great. And you just, you're gonna question every choice you make. 100%. That pressure from everything. We couldn't really figure it out, and so um, someone had recommended Paris, you know, just because she has a really cool sound. So this is like a demo they send over, and yeah, we, we were just kind of opening it up for the first time. <laughs> voice just feels like kind of something that Vi would, the attitude's really, really fun. She even has like the shaved side and then like the nose ring. I was like, she kind of is Vi. Imagine Dragons. I'm uh, Dan from Imagine Dragons and this is our studio. Such Whoa, a shame. I feel like I've said that from the beginning of this, this Daniel show. Daniel our drummer. How's it going? So sick. And this one Carpets. Oh, I can't believe you guys are yeah. in here. At this full on studio. What are you doing here? <laughs> Certainly, been, we have definitely been uh, late on stage in front of, I don't know, tens of thousands of people, maybe hundreds of thousands of people because we were finishing a, a ranked League of Legends game yeah. and we didn't want to get banned. <laughs> I love that. I've never played it, but I couldn't understand. And I love Christian. We vibed out. He told me about what he'd been working on. He showed me a lot of slides and storyboard. At that time, it was in the very early stages of our game. But it was enough that I understood the dynamic at play with, you know, the sisters and then Vi and Jinx. <laughs> you know, as far as enemy goes, I think there's a lot of times in people's lives where you just feel like uh, alone or you feel isolated. You against the world. Searching to be home, stories in a toe, never be a saint. 
Ah, uh, I love his voice. I might just go and dig into it with Magic Dragons. <laughs> I mean, it goes without saying, like, the last scene of season one is probably going to be an important scene. Mm -hmm. And it was this beautiful montage, and they had uh, tempted up with this, like, stunning David Bowie song. <laughs> and they're like, you know, Alex, could you, <laughs> could you write us a song that fills this moment? And you're like, sure, I'm going to have a panic attack first. Uh, I'm going to go <laughs> see my therapist, and then as soon as I center myself, try and write a song that lives up to that moment. I really like him. He seems a good guy. So here's some of the uh, initial stems that I had done. It was just like a piano and my own vocal. I am the monster you created. Ripped out of my parts. The way it starts is just like a person just like lamenting. I mean, it was really Jinx's voice in this song. The lyrics for that one came quickly. The difficulty with that was writing a song that's structured properly. Okay, which artists do we want to have sing this? Yeah. Just, just sting. <laughs> I am your ghost, a fallen angel. You ripped out all my parts. Sting was at the top of our list. I mean, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty convenient to be like, oh, we'd love to have Sting. Like, oh, yeah, would you? <laughs> but we, we had him there, and we were able to talk to him about it and get him into it and show him the sequence, and he was just really generous. And it's like, What could have been? You work on these moments for so long until you act like when you think, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. But you just don't quite know until you actually see everything done. And two or three years where you go, I think it's going to be amazing, but I'm not quite sure. That's so tough, isn't it? Two or three years. I'm curious to see how it will go when this show hits all the platforms so people come watch it and it's released and how, how it'll go for our league audience, you know? And also kind of like general audience. Yeah. Audience, they will certainly tell us how they feel. I can imagine. <laughs> really cannot fail, you know? Like, it's not, that's not an option. And so, it just makes you question everything. Yeah, it will, man. It's the next level pressure. That episode went so quickly. Must that be there? That was so good. That was so good. Like every episode so far has been so good. But I think for me personally, like I think some of you even said, you know, musical misfits. It, it, that that's a bit of you, man. And you you weren't lying. That was fully a bit of me. I think taking me back to like the actual series and and even even that song that Jasmine Sullivan sung, like I remember, look, and that was one of the things actually that made me that made me realise our game was a little bit different because um, and I'm sure it's after the the first episode and they're all kind of contemplating what the next actions are going to be before it, it's like right at the end and that song kicks in and I remember being like, wait. It's like a tune, tune, like, and I remember shazamming it at that time to be like, what is this? Because the singer reminded me of, because like the vocal runs in this from her, um, like that reminds me of someone that, that, that like, it sounds like Jasmine Sullivan, but like, how is Jasmine Sullivan going to be on like some random, like, like animated show, <laughs> like what? And then it was her. And that's when I realised, I'm like, nah, this, this show is a bit different. You know, you watch a lot of anime shows, he watched like, like like Japanese anime shows, for example. There's like rock in there and da, da 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 da. But this had, like he said, they had genres from all manners, all different manners of music that had encompassing this. But I think what is telling for me um, is that they put so much thought 
into making it organic from the beginning. This wasn't like, as I said, wanting to be like post-production music. Like they were making it to the art. They were making it to, in some cases, making themes before they'd even seen anything. Um, the, 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 the level of, of kind of expertise Seabert, I'm gonna make sure I write his name down because I need to remember him. He he was cool. In fact, they were all cool. I'm actually writing his name down because um, I want to I want to I want to find out more. He's like he's got a really nice voice as well. When he was singing that last song, like and hearing that kind of we all know I love a husky tone, like smashing that. Um, Christian, like again, I knew that he'd risen through the ranks before and whatever, but like. I didn't realise he had that kind of backstory and that kind of history and when he can be like, oh, that cello is an octave lower, you need to, I'm, I'm, I can't speak music, so that's, that's me then. Um, but imagine, like, and it, and it just goes to, tell, goes to show you, like, imagine how many people are sat in jobs right now where they're just, as I said, and again, no shade, like, those jobs need to be done, so that's yeah, cool. But when you've got so much talent inside you to do so much more, where you can be overseeing one of the biggest projects, I think I, I don't know. I mean, I've never watched any other behind the scenes, so I don't know how other animation houses like compare. Um, but to me, this is every time I watch something, it just overwhelms me with the with the with the the grand nature of the task at hand. And then what he said at the end there was that like this is something that can't fail, can't fail. And yet, you don't know how it's going to be until three years time when you can see it all together. Like, if I even take, like, editing one of my videos, there'll be portions of my video that I'm like, oh, that's going to be cool. But I still have to see, I still have to watch all of it. Like, because you don't know how it all's going to mesh together and how, what the what the vibe's going to be like and the mood. And, and that is just a 10, 12 minute video that I want to do to YouTube. Imagine you've got all, when they had all the people in the orchestra, like, and you've got um, the other guy um, who he said was like God level composer. Like you've got all these different violinists and all these different, all the, all the strings. And you're just like, this is such a huge operation. Then you've got that amazing guy, you've got all these amazing artists. You've got Sting, like, <laughs> Honestly, this show is even bigger than I than I could possibly have anticipated, and I didn't think I could love it anymore. But I think seeing the level of effort and the level of thought and dedication, sacrifice, I imagine sleepless nights, many over the three years, like. Amazing, absolutely amazing show. That's probably my favourite one so far. I've loved them all previously, like I'm seeing all the art, but seeing how the music was made and uh, that was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I love like how they did uh, the blending, like the three tracks into one, like which again you wouldn't you wouldn't know that just what just binging it through you wouldn't know that. So no, that was great, absolutely brilliant. Anyway, let me stop talking because we have episode five to watch. That was tip. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching this. I really, really, really enjoyed that. And for everybody that told me that I would, yeah, all right. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you for watching. And if you did enjoy this, then uh, of course, please do, if you don't mind, uh, drop a like and subscribe. And um, obviously this video is going, going to be on Patreon first, but yeah, if you want to get you know early access to watching this and you know, get requests listened to, uh, uh, get requests made earlier, sorry, then yeah, just uh, head on over to Patreon and pick your tier. And I'm all yours, baby. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you. Well, I'll see you literally in, in two because we've got episode five to watch. So, see you in a bit. <laughs>